Welcome everyone, it's Deb from Huckleberries. I am going to talk to you today about a little bit about ruler work because some people have no idea what ruler work is. I'm not going to really show you um, how to do it necessarily. It's going to be about what we use and how we can use it to make quilting easier. So here is a runner that I have done up using just rulers. Okay, so in this triangle here, you can see this is all straight line. And I do teach this as a class, and the straight line one, I go into depth, how you can create all the shapes um, using basically the ruler markings. And this was a, um, a technique that at first intimidated me. It was just something I needed to buckle down and take time to learn. And I found there wasn't a lot of videos when I started um, doing this, so I had to figure out a lot on my own. Now there's a lot more out there, and I will mention names so that you can take a look. This here is just based on curves. It could be part of a circle, or it could be part of a curved ruler. This one, this section here was a straight line. This one was just a clamshell um, set, which is sort of like half circles. And I'll show you the set that I used for that. And again, the end, I went back to straight lines and some pretty cool things you can do. And like I said, I didn't mark for most of this stuff. I was able to, um, very little marking and using as much of the ruler as I can. And I've learned to do that over time. Um, I hope I will do other videos later that will show you more how to use the markings, but we're just going to talk about what we need to do and why would you ruler quilt. So the biggest thing is straight lines. I can use my walking foot, right? Well, if I'm going to be doing this on a big quilt, that's a lot of pivoting and turning a big quilt. And that's why the advantage goes to um, a ruler. It allows you, and I can kind of mimic that, but I can kind of run along and I can keep turning my ruler and I'm working my foot along a ruler. So here's the foot and this is the Bernina ruler foot. It is a quarter inch from the center needle position. It's a quarter inch all the way around, which is awesome. And there is also, we are really fortunate to have this little screw and this will increase or decrease the amount of foot pressure that that foot has, as well as having our foot pressure control on our machine. So we can, you can get fairly thick or you can go right down. And I'll show you how that goes on the machine in a sec. So with this, I am kind of running my foot along here and then I would turn my ruler and I would do this, okay, back and forth. And then I would create the same thing going back and forth the other way, which with a walking foot would be a lot more effort for me. I can go much quicker now. Yes, the walking foot is great when you're going across and doing a straight line, but say you want to start pivoting and doing decorative features or diamonds in things, then you wouldn't want to be doing that, okay? So you can see this sort of point-to-point -point idea. That is much easier with um, the ruler foot. Piano keys. I am going up and down like this. Can you imagine doing this motion with your walking foot and pivoting? That's not going to happen. I like to show you this sample because you can see I'm only working in a two inch space. So this is a great idea for any of you wanting to start. Create something, even placemats with two inch, two and a half inch strips and you can break them up with a one inch strip or one and a half inch strip. And then just you have, you're working within a confined space and that really, really works well when you're learning. And it just, and it transfers to a quilt as well. So I've got the foot, I've got a ruler. I recommend, and when I do teach this as a class, my first class is just straight lines. That's all we work on. And we work on how to move. So when I, on my machine here, I'm going to take my quarter inch patchwork foot off. And you can see I've got a straight stitch plate on and I'm, a lot of people aren't aware still that the best, if you have the availability for your machine, is to get a straight stitch plate for both your piecing, quilting, embroidery, anytime you're going to be doing a straight stitch. That allows much less play than, oh, can't find my zigzag foot. My, I have a nine millimeter plate, so it's about this wide and that's a lot of room for flagging if that's going to happen. So you want a straight stitch plate on and on my Bernina, I always basically have that on 
right here. I'm telling the machine I've got that on and that's why it's yellow. Now it's telling, as soon as I go to start sewing, it won't let me sew. I've got to tell my machine that I've got the 72 foot in. And again, this is another um, security measure as well. So right underneath is says 50. And this is my presser foot pressure. I play with this a lot, even when I'm piecing, I bring it down to about 35. With this, I don't have to really bring it down much if I don't want to because, I'm gonna drop my foot. Can you see how my foot was fairly high? I, how far I can bring that down and I've still got a lot of room. So I'm actually gonna change it back, clear it and go back to normal on that one. Now the straight edge, this is what we're doing. We're pulling our ruler against it, okay? And then I'm going to be moving, I'm pushing. I want, I usually wear gloves, but I'm not running it right now. I have a hand on this ruler and I do have grip. And I'll talk a little bit more about rulers in a minute. These were the original set by Bernina that didn't have grip on them. So I've just got a tape that's on it. There are other grip products that I'll show in a moment. You can also sing. I've marked my ruler. I've got a 30 degree line. I've got the 45s. I've got a 30 at this end and 60s. I do explain that. Um, I will explain that in another video. But those are great reference marks when you're wanting to change the direction of your lines. And I just marked it with the big Sharpies I found were the best ones on the top of the ruler, not on the bottom. So I'm not worried about that interfering with any of my fabric. And if I want to remove that, I can take it off easily as well. Baking soda works well. I haven't tried the hand sanitizer yet, but that might work too. I've also got arrow stickers. That's obviously marking probably a one inch space that I was probably trying to pivot at. Again, you'll um, hear more about how I've learned to mark rulers that don't have marks on them. This one, you can see a lot more marks. It's a straight line one as well. It was in a special set called the Jubilee set. It's still available and it has a large circle and a small circle with it. So it's a great beginner set, but this ruler is awesome. It has tabs on the ends, which means when, my, when I finish quilting, I'm a quarter inch away from this point here automatically, which is super helpful. And you can see this quarter inch line even lines up with that line. I've got a line on the front of my foot. So the whole thing with ruler quilting, and I do describe all of these features more in class, is I'm. if you have another part of your second hand on the ruler, either at the back or at the front, so what I tend to do is if I'm at the front, I will move, and here, let's start moving, just so you can see. So, feed dogs are dropped. Um, I just go to my basic stitch. Kevin often says on certain machines too that you can actually reduce your stitch length to zero, but I have dropped my feed dogs, so I'm not worried about that. So, first thing I do is I bring out my thread, just like I would do for free motion quilting, because that's what this is. So if you have a stitch regulator, yeah, it's not, oh, I don't have a bobbin in. <laughs> this is what I wanted to talk about. This is the regular bobbin case for the four, five, and seven series of, of the Bernina ones. This is a high tension one, and I use this for my quilting um, and embroidery. So it's got my thread in there. That's what I wanted to explain before I showed you this. So we bring up the thread. No, it's not gonna work for me. Oh, I think I got it. Okay, so it's there, and then I find the easiest thing for me is to pull it with the tweezers. I, my hands don't get in there well. So now I'm going to drop, I'm going to stitch either in place or slowly forward, okay? Just small, small stitches. Now this is for free motion or for uh, ruler quilting. And I was holding on to those threads and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna trim them Oops. off. And so now I've got nothing on the back and nothing on the front. So that's just a basic free motion technique there. Love these tweezers. These are Bernina tweezers. Can you see how they're curved? These are actually serger tweezers. Um, and these are great for getting into our hook area. The one we've got little balls of lint. These are like magic. So I have those beside me all the time. So, big thing, foot down, 
before you bring any ruler in to a foot. Why? If it's up and I bring it in, can you see the danger there? I could actually come crashing down on the ruler because you're not, you might not judge exactly where to do that. So biggest thing, put your foot down, bring your ruler into place. And then you probably will get better with your free motion quilting when you start ruler quilting because you're more focused uh, with the ruler quilting because you're not making the shape, but you really are focusing on keeping the ruler against here. If I go off, like if I move my hand, I've got, this is against, my foot's not against anything. It's just gonna be a random movement or a random line. So I need to put pressure on my ruler against my foot. And you can see if I start going, I start stitching first so I don't get a long stitch and I'll explain. So if I started to move my hands first, can you see that long stitch? That was exaggerated. But if I start stitching first and then go, I won't have a gap. Now if I needed to, I could keep going and I could slide this down. And with the Bernina feet, we're lucky that we can, these are quarter inch rulers, so I can go in all four directions. Okay. And now, can you see how I'm using two hands though on the ruler at all times? What a difference that makes. That was a game changer for me and that was Amanda um, Murphy. And then I could go this way, start first and then go. Okay. And this is what I would want anyone learning just to start with is the straight line, okay? And like I said, I take, um, I do a five hour class and we just work on the straight line um, quilting because what I just showed you now, moving is not just as simple as sitting down and moving. It is free motion. It is also moving a ruler. Once you get the hang of it, like I was unregulated, so I'm not, I had quite small stitches for what I'm used to doing. You will find though you're probably more consistent with your stitches when you use your rulers than you are if you just start doing your free motion, just your own designs. Whoops. So always start with straight line rulers. This one is part of a set. We've got, um, this is the original um, essential set or basic set that Bernina had part of it. It came with circles, actually it's over here. Here's my rulers. So, Joanne organized this for me. So, I have this one. You can see all the curves, all different ends. So much you can do. I won't even go into all of it. That's crazy. There's a scallop, two different sides. When you're working with something like this, always start with a gentle curve to learn these sharp curves. It's a lot more moving of, um, in and out of your, around your foot, which is a lot more difficult. Those are circles, they're nesting ones, and I've got them taped together. And there's ovals as well. What they've done, I think, in the next set is they've got these individually done. They don't have them in a in the frame. What do they call this, Joanne? I can't remember what they call that when we take that out. But I like just taking the circles out and going around them. So sure. I. And these are the two that went with that other ruler I talked about. Awesome set to start with. I know I've had a lot of people after they take my class choose to get this set. You've got the straight line. You've got 45s marked on it. You've got these inch marks. We don't, these are also marks that we use. Um, on the circles, you can also see these lines here. So if I was quilting, you can see I can put a line on a seam. That's how those work. And then I could stitch around. Right, so I would actually stitch, stop, move my ruler, and continue. And I can do it in the opposite direction. You can have crazy, you can, it reminds me of spirograph actually once you get going. So that's what these rulers are. Anytime you're working with your foot and your ruler, any ruler, you're always gonna be a quarter inch away from the edge, whether it's a straight edge or a circle edge. If I work this interior though, now it's gonna be smaller because I'm working towards the middle of this shape. This one is actually for pebbles. Can you see how those are marked? That's how si that's how big you would be stitching actually. So when you stitch a circle, you, uh, you would stitch and then you would slide it over. There's your reference line. This would sit on your previous stitch circle. You go one and a half times around to here and you slide it. One and, and you usually change directions on these and you keep going and that's working within a one inch space. So that's what this particular ruler set was sort of an introductory one that Amanda Murphy 
did with them a quilt she designed for Bernina for the 125th anniversary. And I know some of our customers got this set with their machines that they bought that were the 125 year ones. So start with a straight line. You can see this one's a little different. Still has tabs that will stop you a quarter inch away. Um, and then a curved end and a 45 degree angle. And different markings on here though than on here. So I use both of these all the time. So we've got here, this is what we've got um, available in Huckleberries and we can order anything in. These two are by Angela Walters. So I've mentioned, these are the names as I'm going through. Amanda Murphy, Angela Walters is another one to go to YouTube and they have done great videos now in the last few years that make it a lot easier for you to follow along and learn. So this is Smiley. This is Slim, and you can see this is a straight edge one, but there's no tabs on it. It's curved, okay, and it's really, it's a nice size to hold. And remember, you can only quilt within a six inch space, so we don't need a ruler 12 inches long. You can have a ruler this long. I do like this one, just because sometimes I have a little bit longer space to go across, but you also learn how to shift your ruler up while keeping a line on another base point of a quilt so that you can still work with the smaller ones. So this one is slim, this one is smiley. She's got lots more and we can order all of those in. They, she's done this in conjunction with Creative Grids. So they have the grip on them and they're white and black marks. We have Amanda Murphy and she has done a lot of rulers and some great videos. This one is the Every Feather Spine. So this is just for the spine to, um, to trace out your spine before you do feathers. If you want, there is a Every Feather Plume set. This is for someone who isn't confident in doing your own feathers. This gives you the shapes and there's, oh, how many different rulers? I don't have this one. So I think there's four in this set as well. And there's two plumes per set. She has great videos on how to use these as well. This one is her, one of the newer ones is the Every Hex. Again, all these lines are confusing until you start using them and watch the videos on how to use the rulers. So she's got three different sizes in this one. She's got another one called um, Every Hexagon One, and it is the smaller set of hexagons. So these are larger ones, three, four, and five inch. She's got those marked on there. And again, all these lines are to be used so that you can keep things centered or have them working diagonally, however you're going to play with that. There is the clamshell one, and that's what I used on these ones here. So you can see the different sizes. So this one here was the smallest one, I believe. And you've got the two sides, and she does mark down, I think, what the measurements were on them. And she's got, I've got this one, it's every circle. And there's five rulers in there. And this, again, I love being able just to use partial circles to give petals or just um, scalloped edges. So circles are a great investment once you've, once you've learned the straight line. And I've got this one too, it's every curve. And what's kind of neat, this, this one's curved as well. It has a straight edge though. So you can kind of have both in one. These are all to create, you can create full circles with them if you want. Like if you use this one, you get an eight inch circle. This one is part of a 12 inch. Again, she's got a video on that one. And this is the Baptist fan. And I've watched her video on that. And it was, I, I would never be able to figure it out just by looking at these rulers because she's got a set for each, like because you're stacking sort of for the Baptist fan. I don't know. There's the five different rulers. And then essentially you can see the shape that you're creating and you're doing it across or building it. And I have one customer who got this and said it was awesome. She loved it, how it worked. So again, ruler quilting isn't something that is quick. So if you're wanting to commit to something, it's gotta be for someone very quilt worthy or for yourself. Um, I recommend starting on placements, table runners, doing something that's fast, much faster. And it's also easier to move because you are moving your fabric at the same time and it's a new technique. So these rulers here, so I talked about Bernina and you saw how I could move around my whole foot with my ruler. 
There are machines out there that don't have the capability. They're a lower shank and the ruler will not get behind the foot. It is, it clicks on the back. So they have come out with these rulers. They're called the low shank. So they're not a quarter inch now. Okay, so they're not as thick as these ones, but they will allow you to go around the whole perimeter of your foot. These rulers can still be used on any of those machines. You just can't work from the back. On another machine, I had only one in a class. She also couldn't work from one of the sides, so she was limited to side and front only, not to the other side and the back. So you get used to what you're able to do, but there are the low shank available. Um, with you can't Murphy. use low shank if you have a high shank. That's, That's right. right. Our foot would land on this. So we do not, the Berninas do not want to use these. Okay. This is for other machines that aren't able to use the quarter inch. They call this long arm and they call them templates. So you don't get it confused with actual rulers because you don't want to be using your regular rulers that you cut with to quilt with. These are made of thick plastic. They're higher. They're meant for the quilting and these this technique started out with long armors um, and these ones here are the mini curvet and the QC art curvet and there's actually two rulers here there's the curve is here so this one has that um, convex and then the concave or I might screw those up but you can kind of see here's a picture there's the curve there so they match the curves match each other one's in and one's out and you do find that handy because you'll find you're gonna want when you're sitting down and quilting that you like to work from one side more than the other so you can flip between the two rulers this is matched to the mini quick curve ruler so any projects that you do with the mini quick curve this will match it and if you go on to so kind of wonderful they've got a lot of videos they do of just um, quilting and you'll watch them use their rulers they also have a straight edge on both sides super handy and this is just the larger version um, that matches the regular, the original quick curve ruler curves in any of those projects. And we've done a lot of their projects. I have another ruler that mimicked these curves, otherwise I would have got them. And they were by Natalia Bonner. And that's these rulers here. And we can't get them any longer from where we, I think you have to only order them from her now. So you can kind of see this is the four in one. Had a straight edge. She marked the has curves, and then she's got markings all the way up. This one sort of mimics, see how that works? So it's the opposite, it's the same curve, but depending which way I'm going, if I'm going on this side, I'm gonna have it curve that way, or this way, but I can actually just change my ruler out as opposed to turning the ruler, if that makes any sense. And I've also got the mini versions of both of them, which are nice for the smaller blocks. So, those are, a lot of rulers, that's not all of them. Handy Quilter has a lot of rulers. Um, so Steady was sort of, I think, the first company that really started with all that stuff. So there are lots more rulers out there. But my recommend, start with straight line and maybe a circle or a curved ruler after that. And you would be surprised what you can do just with the straight line rulers and um, just with a, a slight curve. You don't need to... Um, have all of these. These are just sometimes options for people that um, have specific projects that they do want to do, like had the customer. She wanted that on her quilt and it was her own quilt and she was so excited that she could get those rulers. So other products. This is the first book I got and this was one of the first ones that was out. What it does though, I was so intent on teaching everything on straight lines, which was from all of this stuff here. Well, the poor class, I have to apologize to all of them now. It didn't really explain how to get there. Like they'd show the pictures. So it wasn't so much um, teaching you how to sit down and move your quilt. It was just, okay, this is what you do. Then I realized we need to just work on practicing. How do we actually move with a ruler in our hand? Funny thing is she came out with a second book, which she went over very detailed products. Okay. And she is a Bernina person. Oh, I've even got some of the stuff here that I'm going to show you. Didn't know that. Okay. So rulers. Talks about the rulers. 
So way more discussion here on stuff. And then showing you, see these pictures? You get a really good visual of how to get to that point, not just a picture of this at the end. And that for us quilters is really, really important. Okay, so that's what this whole book is. Lots of pictures and then some of her quilts and ideas there. Actually, this is the Bernina uh, set that she had done, or that was the panel, and I think her quilt was in here. Where was it? Sorry. And I probably flew by it. Oh, Carrie did this one. Uh, Diamond Jubilee, and that was a paper-pieced one that Carrie did as a class that um, some of you have done, and it's stunning. So that's who that, who, um, Amanda Murphy is. So Amanda Murphy's got these books and she's got all of this, the good measure rulers. That's her line that she's done in, um, and Brewer is who we purchase those from. If you've got books like this, The Shape by Shape by Angela Walters, these are also really good too, to look at and figure out which rulers I can use. Look at this, this is all straight line. That straight line, except for the curves in the middle, which could be done freehand or with a ruler the diamonds. So I always, I had these before I ruler quilted and then um, they got, I was amazed at how easy it was once we got to rulers because she just shows this free form. You see a diamond. You can see how creating shapes with straight lines and then keeping your ruler foot on because you can free motion quilt with it. You fill in with your free motion, whatever makes you like there. That's just like a crazy eight one and she gives variations. So this, both these books of hers are really good. This design we've probably all seen. First time I did it, it was just freehand. So I was not using a ruler, so it was straight-ish. <laughs> and you would go around. Oh, it's amazing what the ruler can do. So if you've got these books, these are also great to go back to. And your walk books. Look inside your walk books for patterns and you can do these with rulers and the ruler quilting as opposed to doing it with the, and there's lots, lots of ideas. So you can be marking the same things, but you can actually be doing it with your ruler. And sometimes you can avoid marking, which I'll discuss in a, another video about how we use the lines on the rulers. So back there, that perfect, that tape, that's what I originally used for the back of my rulers. And then I did find, and we've got lots of these at the store, True Grips, and they're clear. There's 15 small, 15 large in a pack. And these aren't just for quilting, like our templates are for ruler quilting. You can use these on any rulers you've got that don't have, um, like your quick curve rulers don't have any grip on them. Anything that doesn't have grip, you can use that. And we also have, this is quite grippy, and it's by Westerly Designs and it's called staple tape, and that was one of the first ones out. And that just peels and sticks. You cut it to the length you want, and that works really good for good grip. Uh, marking. I like if I have to mark, which with rulers, I try not to mark too much. I try to use seam lines. I try to use the markings on a ruler. But when I do, I do like, this is the fine line mark be gone. And this one you can actually spritz away, but you have to make sure it's spritzed away before you apply heat, as it will set it. A lot of Lauren armors, if you watch them, do use something of that nature. The hair marker, that is, oh, I don't even know where mine is. Where's right there? Okay, that will actually crease your fabric. I'm not taking out the package, but you can kind of see. You get a semi crease. If you want, you can just use that to mark if it's going to be used very quickly because that crease will not stay. The self erase marker this is a quilter select, so that is Alex Anderson, um, her product. I really like this, but it can disappear quite quickly depending on your fabric. So if you're marking something and you want it for tomorrow, it might not be there. And I know that for a fact. I had one last four days and one last. 12 hours. These are so line and I've got these um, as well. One is a marker and then the other is the eraser. Works really, really well. And so line has really good reviews on their um, marking products and their glue sticks. I use Sewer's Aid for all my free motion quilting. I put it on my needle um, and it just, 
slows down the collecting of lint and batting that are accumulate when we do uh, free motion quilting. Great for applique. If you're doing any applique, that's what you want. That will solve your gumming up problem. Um, oh, this is Terry G, her idea. This is rinse away thread. If you're wanting to practice and you wanna keep using the same sample, put this on your bobbin. And then when you're done, you spritz the back and then you can pull all the top thread out and you can start again. I was like, oh, that's pretty brilliant. But you do want to kind of have track of how you, where you started from and where you're going. So I would always leave some parts done with regular threads so that you can just see your improvement. Um, she was showing it from, a, she had a pre-printed panel, which is just dots and it was pretty cool. So that's where that I, um, that would work super well. Remember what those are, Joy? <laughs> <laughs> so these are stitching line discs, and there's a pack of eight. And you can see the holes are all, can you see the holes in those? The holes are all different, and I've got mine over here. Here's my bin of stuff. So this is another product of Free Motion Glider. So you can, this goes on my the bed of my machine, and you can, they, it's oh, like, a, like a window. Mm -hmm. uh, cling idea and there's lots of different ones out there we've got a couple of different ones in the store then I will show you that after where did my oh, down here in my bin of everything else this is my full container of ruler quilting stuff those are mine in here actually I had a student who had a great idea she put these all on a big safety pin so she didn't lose them now the reason there's different Whole sizes. It's for whatever implement you want to use to create a drawing. So if I take my paper, this is now the foot and the center is your needle position because this is a quarter inch all the way around. So if I was picking out, I don't know if that's going to work. No, it's too fine. Okay, I've just got a regular pen. I like these colored ones. So if I was using, let's just pretend there's my shape that I'm quilting in and I want to see even how this curve would look. This is going to imitate my, okay, I can, oh, this one's pretty good actually. See where I'm starting? That's how I, my foot would be in that position. And I can see that this, was a pretty perfect curve using this line on this curve, okay? Now I can come inside that line and I could do another one. I would travel along this line. We do a lot of stitch in the ditch when we do ruler work and then I could do that curve there, okay? And this is exactly what this ruler would give you with the foot, because I put that against the foot. And so that is the size of my foot, the center position is my needle. So I can audition on paper, but what you can also do is there's Quilter's Preview Paper, which is this, or you can use plastic plexiglass sheets like this. This is actually x-ray tech paper from years ago. My aunt gave me a whole whack of it because they've changed years ago to everything computerized. So she gave me that. So I could do the same thing. I can put this, say, on top of oops, this block. Then I can put my ruler down and use one of the discs, and I can actually audition to scale what my design would look like on there. So I just used these. You can use a permanent marker, and then with the permanent marker, your handy-dandy hand sanitizer and a piece of batting. So if I... red one. I don't know if you're going to see it. Oops, I should be doing it with my stitching line disc. Okay, I, I would have it in my stitching line disc to show you. And that's how it would work. Now, when you're using anything like this, I would actually put tape on the top edges of this. I've watched a lady called um, Susan Smith, who's a long arm quilter. She buys, she's got a big just plexiglass sheet, 
that she got from the hardware store and she's put tape on the top and she's a long armor and she just puts that on top, draws, and that's her practice and then she will quilt. So now this, let's see how good this works now. Hey, all that hand sanitizer, you know that gallon you've got in your cupboard? Guess what? Hey, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would just let this dry. And again, they're probably, if I'm not really, like I would take my time to really clean these. Um, Cause you don't want to flip that the wrong way and maybe get some of that stuff onto your quilt. That would be the only thing. But she just recommends if you tape, I was thinking even if you did, if you had the plexiglass, it's thicker, I would probably put like even handles on it and that would let you know exactly where. Also having perimeters marked like on the quilters preview paper. Did I actually, oh, here it is. Okay, you can see I've used this <laughs> and practice designs, right? So it wouldn't have been on something like that, but you can see what I was doing was marking these dots. This was telling me where the seam lines were for me. And so I was just seeing what the design and I just went with that. I, I think that was Athena last year. Okay, so then I was playing, but you can see, now this was a free motion design I was practicing on a quilt that I did. And then you'll come up to the blank stuff. So now this would go on your quilt. Can you see the black line in here? So the only quilt that would be hard on is if you had a little black, but that is to designate your area so that you're not going to draw onto your quilt. Again, if you're worried, I would put another, I would put tape along this. I've got to go back. I wanted to leave this just so you could see. I actually had it up to here with black and that will come off. Um, better to take it off sooner than later. But, and there's lots on these rolls. So you can do it either way, the plexiglass. I also use my iPad um, and an eye pencil when I take a photo. I can show you that quickly. Because you can do it with, if you've got an eye pencil even on your phone, the editing in your editing feature. When you go to draw, you could bring in your block and draw, but it's not to scale. So the idea with this, you get to see to scale how that's gonna look, particularly with rulers. That's why I'm, Thing for rulers, I would use either of these techniques. The drawing one that I will show maybe in a free motion one because actually on your iPad, you don't get to see which rulers would work great except straight lines. As soon as you start doing curves, it changes it. Okay, let's see. The other thing for marking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one I just did. I just love this. I'm such a gadget person. But if I had a block, say this is my block, and some of you probably know, Joanne knew what this was for, I think, because her mom had one. Yeah, and it's pretty. for, it's a button spacer. So if you had, you know, a space, or, you know, you can go as far as you want. This one, two, four, six, eight, nine. Um, so if I was working in a block, though, and I wanted to do equally spaced lines, I would have one here and one here, because that would, does that make sense? You'd have one on each seam, and then your inside lines would all be now equally spaced. I could actually take a marker then and just go into the slits and mark. If I was going diagonally, I think, oh my God, this is so brilliant. I could equally space lines just across that way. And there's a little bit of an indent at the end of these. So I can just take whatever marker I've got and just do that. And it doesn't have to be much of a mark usually when we're working with the rulers. We're just, it's usually just a guideline. So either I can mark it in there, right? And I could just do a small dot, or I could just go at the very end of the, and usually that's all I'm needing. But I thought, wow, that gives you a nice spacing. Um, and if you wanted certain inches, you'd measure, and then that's always the same right across the board. So pretty cool. We don't have these in stock, but we can order them in. Um, there was a couple of different ones. This is actually, some of you have the seam guide tools. This is an eighth of an inch, there's a half inch, and there's our favorite, our quarter inch. So this is helpful for ruler quilting. You can actually have this down on a project and put it down so that you stop a quarter inch away, which is difficult when you're working from, when you can't see behind your machine. Everything's easier in front. When you can't see behind, this is really handy to use. So that's an Amanda Murphy product. 
And the two things that not just Bernina has, but this is what I'm familiar with, they're called Echo Clips. And actually, that's how I did do that quilt that Joanne just showed you. It's called Bubbles and Waves. I took the idea from a Susan Smith, who's a long arm quilter, and tried to relay it into the sit down machine. So what those are, if I'm using, and it says I wrote it on here. <laughs> okay, so there's the small one that I just finished using. Small is a half inch, medium three quarter, and the large is an inch. That means if I So I take my foot off to put these on. We have had people break them. You run your finger, the edge side has to be down when you put this in. So my edge side is there, so I put it down and I've snug the foot down into it. Okay, just like that. And now it's giving me that echo ability, which I loved in the quilt I just did because I was following echoing a line that I had started with. And once I got, I mean, I got better as I went. It wasn't perfect, but I just wanted to get it done. So now when I'm using the edge of my ruler, so foot down first, then butt your ruler in. So before I was a quarter inch away. Okay, so now, whoops. I have to leave my ruler there so you can see where I started. So now that's a half inch rather than the quarter inch, which I would have been there with the, oops, can you see, John? Uh, mark. So did the ruler on. Okay, so that's where my ruler sat and that's where my stitching. Whereas before my ruler was there and I was a quarter inch away. So these echo clips add a whole lot. You think of using a circle, and if I've got a five inch circle, I now have a five and a half inch circle. No, yeah, I guess, or six, does it add? Half inch to both sides, right? And if I used the three quarter inch or the one inch, that would make it that much bigger. So then it's playing with, you can have a shape, but now if you have the echo clips, that actually adds to your rulers without actually having to purchase extra rulers, particularly with your curves or your circles. Um, like I said, I haven't played with these enough, but I was so excited that I went, oh, I know what I can do. I don't have to eyeball this. I can actually, so I just kept running my lines as close, okay? It's close-ish. It's not perfect, believe me. If you want perfection, because um, you don't want to unpick. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to be patient and practice. And the last thing you can put in your feet, and you can actually couch, is the <laughs> Sorry, where are my couching inserts? Oh, they were right here, right here. There they are. So these actually go in the center of your foot. Not, so the other, the couching one, or sorry, the echo one goes around it, okay? These actually go in the center, and there's three different ones. And you can probably see that the holes, oh, maybe I'll turn that out where you can see that better. Okay. And you see the smaller the sizes? This is for cording or yarn to go through. So now you can actually ruler quilt and couch if you want it, like, or you can use that foot and just free motion. And I don't know. Oh, I have a sample somewhere of just practicing the lines. We don't have it there. Anyways, you're just going to feed through your cord. You can put the cording on your freehand system if you've got that bar. Um, there's different ways. There's a great video that Bernina has done. It's just going to Bernina International to YouTube and I think just couching inserts and you'll find she shows how to use these. You're using the smallest hole possible for the yarn. To go through and then you're stitching on it so you're matching your thread to whatever yarn you use again I've, ha I've got to play a little bit more I tried to do some like flowers and I think the trick is you got to go slower so that the needle actually hits your um thread. your couch your thread yeah. the thread actually hits it because it goes past it sometimes okay so I hope I gave you a little bit of insight into ruler quilting and how rulers actually work it is still free motion quilting. It's unregulated, so you are the person, but I don't think I've taught this quite a few times now. Um, everyone has said their free motion quilting got better. 
because of doing this. So I thought, well, that's a bonus. Um, I think the focus is different because you are focusing on keeping your hands moving against the needle. So you have a really steady pace. And I think once you learn to go in all four directions with your rulers, you're going to go to your free motion and find that that relates um, nicely to that. So you'll find it a lot easier. So we'll be back next time with another way to use your rulers using the registration marks.